Hello and welcome to Mix and Jam, a channel about game development experimentation, and today's project is inspired by Splatoon. Splatoon is certainly one of the most creative games that Nintendo has ever made, and the entire game revolves around the usage of ink. In order to understand the tech behind the gameplay and visuals, I decided to study the ink system by trying to see what resources I had available and people that could help me to try and recreate the effect using Unity. Let's break down the main components of Splatoon's gameplay for this recreation. First, we have the character controller, responsible for the shooting mechanic, animation blending, and camera positioning. Then there's the ink projectile, that renders volumetric particles, making them look like fluid. And finally, there's the surface painting, that adds ink to existing 3D meshes. I started by creating a new project in Unity and importing the official Mix and Jam character package into the scene, which includes a simple movement script. For the shooting gameplay and visualization, I downloaded a model of the splatter shot on Sketchfab and I also headed over to Mixamo to download some rifle animations. However, the character's proportions don't work as intended when it comes to downloading these pre made humanoid animations. So in order to solve this, I've used Unity's animation rigging package, which allowed me to make adjustments to the character's pose procedurally without affecting the actual animation keyframes. The next thing I implemented was the rotation of the character towards the camera while the player was shooting. However, I could only apply this logic to the horizontal rotation, but since I was already using procedural animation, I made controllers for the character's head, spine, and arms allowing me to move them with a parent game object that would follow the camera's vertical rotation. I even used this single parent controller to create the shooting animation by simply moving the object back and forth. Moving on to the shooting mechanic, I decided to use Unity's particle system as a way to easily tweak and visualize the result of the ink projectile. The main setting here to make the particles look a bit more like they're made out of ink was to render sphere meshes instead of sprites, and to modify the z-scale of that mesh during its trajectory to make it look more realistic. I've also made visual particle systems for the projectile collision and the splash at the weapon's nozzle. Even with this composition of effects, there was still a huge visual difference between the particles from this project and the actual game. While I was researching some techniques to enhance the particle's visuals, I contacted my friend Bronson Zgeb to see if he could help me out. Bronson is an awesome and very skilled game developer, and he's currently writing some game dev articles on his website, which I'll link in the description of this video. Our first attempt to enhance the particles was by using metaballs, which is a technique that allows meshes to blend together when in close proximity to create a blobby looking object. At this point, Bronson did an awesome implementation of this technique with the particle system, but even when downsampling and blurring the metaball render texture, this method turned out to be quite expensive on the GPU. Now with this issue in mind, I started thinking about what sort of solutions we could implement to simplify this process. I remembered that by using Unity's scriptable render pipeline, it is possible to generate a custom render pass that isolates a single layer from the general rendering to add any type of processing to it. With that information, I started to think of what was possible in terms of image processing to make the particles have a metaball-like effect. So basically, I decided to open an image of a random particle emission on Photoshop to test out how the pixels could be manipulated. By examining the image, I noticed that I could add a decent amount of blur to have the pixels expand and intersect with one another. But of course, this meant that the actual pixels were more transparent. So I tested another image technique, which was the usage of the levels adjustment feature, which allowed me to tweak the intensity levels of the image shadows, midtones, and highlights. And with that, I started understanding a good method of processing the particle rendering to make it look like liquid. But another technique I wanted to see if it would improve the effect was by adding a ribbon trail to the particle system, which basically connects the particles with lines. Now this idea was inspired from this pretty cool GDC talk by Andy Seya showcasing their metaball implementation and how they added cylinders in between spheres. This basically adds more density between the particles and if the image levels are adjusted correctly, it almost creates the illusion of surface tension. 
Bronson took this concept and turned it into a URP custom pass that takes the image of a specific layer, blurs the result, and then uses the step function to emulate the image level adjustment. And by comparing this with the original particle, we were stunned by how well the effect turned out. Huge thanks to Bronson for writing the shader stuff and taking the time to research this with me. And while I was looking for approaches for the surface painting, Eric from the channel Tough Nut to Crack reached out to me as he was also working on a video for Splatoon, so it made perfect sense to collaborate on this project. Tough Nut to Crack makes amazing game development videos and they made an extension to this video which dives deeper into the surface painting technique. The approach that they decided to use here was to create a texture as a mask for the ink. Every time a particle collided with the ground, the custom shader would draw on this texture. The texture was then processed via shader graph, first adding noise to the edge of the ink image, then generating a normal map texture also using a noise effect. And finally, blending this image with the actual texture from the mesh. And of course, for more details on the shader implementation, you can check out Tough Nut to Crack's channel. To polish the project a little bit more, I added a glitter effect into the ink shader graph by following this great tutorial by Net Makes Games. And of course, I added a bit of screen shake to when the player is shooting. And after a bit of adjustments, this is how it turned out. The main reason why the project ended up looking so good was because of the collaborative effort and support from talented developers. So huge thanks to Bronson and Eric and Matteo from Tough Nut to Crack. If you're interested in downloading and checking out the code behind this, there's a link for the project's repository in the description below. A massive thanks to those of you who support me on Patreon, including these top tier supporters. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing and sharing this video with friends. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.